Hi everyone, and now we come to Super Bible Facts Part 5 of 10. Now once again, before we get to the 10 Super Bible Facts contained in this message, here are the five different groups or classes of people who are addressed from the first chapter of Matthew to the last chapter of Revelation. Now let's go through them again. Number one, unsaved Israelites who were under the law. Two, saved Israelites who were under the law before they became members of the body of Christ. The third group, unsaved Gentiles who were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and not under the law. The fourth group, carnal saints and babes who were members of the body of Christ. And the fifth group, those who are of full age called the faithful of Christ Jesus. Now remember for an in-depth explanation of these five different groups, I urge you to read Super Bible Facts Part 1. If you keep these five groups in mind, you will derive both blessing and benefit as you carefully study this now fourth set of 10 Super Facts. Okay, here we go. Number one. After the Holy Spirit separated Saul in Acts 13.2, he became the apostle to the Gentiles, Paul. Romans 11.13, and look at Romans 15.16. And it was after that, then God's order was to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. Romans 1.16, Acts 13.46, Acts 18.5-6, even in Rome. About 27 years after the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul addressed the Jews first, Acts 28, 15-28. Okay, Super Fact 2. After the casting away of Israel into darkness, Acts 28, 25-28, Romans 11, 8, Romans 11, 11, and Romans 11, 25, God's order was to the Gentiles and also to the Jews. Now note Ephesians 2.17, to you are far off and to them nigh. There is no scriptural record or, or signs, nor suggestion of any order to the Jew first after the close of Acts. Okay, super fact three. Compare Matthew 15.26 with Romans 10.12. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. The woman that he was speaking with was a Greek. Mark 7:26 and Matthew 15:26. And now let's see Romans 10:12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Note also that the Lord called the Israelites serpents in Matthew 23:33, and after his prayer on the cross for their pardon, they were addressed as children in Acts 3:25. Okay, Super Fact 4, this is a biggie. Do not fail to see the great significance and the radical change suggested in Romans 11:15 that the falling away of Israel meant the reconciling of the Gentiles. This is one of the most significant statements in the Bible. It's linked with the doctrine of reconciliation, or the doctrines of the new creation and identification. When Israel was cast away, the ministry of reconciliation was sent to Gentiles. The reconciliation ministry is linked with the believer's identification with Christ and the new creation in 2 Corinthians 5, 13-21. Now about the same time this epistle, 2 Corinthians, was written, Romans was also written. In Romans 5, 11, the word atonement really should be reconciliation. This is followed by a statement concerning Adam. The Jews came from Abraham. The whole human race came from Adam, hence Colossians 1, 20-21. Reconciliation for all believers. Now in Romans 6 follows the new creation and identification after reconciliation in chapter 5. This ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, was never mentioned by Israel's prophets. Very important. Okay, super fact number five. More than 85% of the facts recorded in the Gospel of John are not found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, generally called the Synoptic Gospels. There are 16 solid chapters of facts in John 
Now, one of which is mentioned in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Seven miracles of Christ are recorded in John before the death of Christ. Five of them are found in John only. In John, the message of grace is presented. And there we find a man blind from birth, impotent, unregenerated, and dead. All right, super fact number six. According to most authorities, Matthew was written before 40 AD, before Cornelius was converted, whereas John was written about 95 AD, nearly 20 years after the Apostle Paul died. Therefore, after the saints were thoroughly indoctrinated with the Pauline grace message. In the very first chapter of John, we see Christ rejected and grace and truth coming by him, John 1, uh, 10 to 18. Although the reign of grace, unmixed, did not begin until Saul became Paul, the reign of grace, unmixed, certainly did not begin with Peter and the eleven Very on the good. day of Pentecost. Super fact number seven. Unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, many of the statements of John were not what Jesus Christ and his disciples said while he was on earth, but what the Holy Spirit led John to write many years after Christ had gone back to heaven. The grace messages of salvation in John are on the grounds of John 129, the blood of the Lamb of God. So, here's an interesting question. Was John 3.16 said while Christ was on earth? or given to John by the Holy Spirit to write years later. Think about that. Okay, super fact number eight. Note carefully Matthew 16, 20. Then charged he, Christ, his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Now here we should observe a turning point in the ministry of the Lord Jesus who had tried in every way to convince Israel that he was Christ or the Messiah. Now the twelve were no longer to give out this testimony to Israel. And then another turning point came after Christ's prayer on the cross for Israel's forgiveness. Then the command of Matthew 16.20 was rescinded and the twelve and Paul testified to Israel that Jesus was the Christ, Acts 2.36, Acts 9.22, Acts 17.3, and Acts 18.5-6. Okay, super fact number nine. In Luke 21, 24-33, we have the record of the coming of the Son of Man to save Israel. In these verses, we find Israel in the throes of the Great Tribulation in saying, Lift up your heads, for the, your redemption draweth nigh. The Lord Jesus was speaking to Israel. Now, if this is a message to the body of Christ, then the body of Christ is headed for the Great Tribulation, which it is not. The Great Tribulation was included in prophecy, but no prophet spoke of the mystery of 1 Corinthians 15, 51, the change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now, super fact number 10. Compare Luke 2, 14, peace on earth, and Luke 12, 48 to 52, no peace on earth. In Luke 1, 28 to 33, we learn that Christ was born to reign on David's throne over the house of Israel, to deliver Israel from Gentile domination, Luke 1, 67 to 77. The peace on earth of Luke 2, 14 would prevail if and when Christ should go to David's throne in fulfillment of Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, but Luke 12, 50 spoke of his death on the cross as his baptism. Because of that death baptism, there is peace with God for individual believers. Romans 5.1 and Colossians 1.20, for example. The peace on earth of Luke 2.14 has been postponed until Christ as king returns to occupy David's throne. All right. Now, there are more super Bible facts that are coming up quick. We ask you to please spread this message to everyone you know far and wide, because as I always say, the time is short. 
And grace be to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye for now.